before we get started, it's very important that you wear rubber gloves. I always make sure I wear gloves when I'm dealing with any chemicals, and especially when I'm cleaning a toilet. So I have these purple ones. I like to buy colors. I'll put a link to everything in the video description. I also, if you're a woman, I like to tie my hair back because I don't want any of my hair getting in that toilet water. <laughs> And I also am wearing my cleaning shirt. None of you have bought one, but I love these shirts from Amazon. They're thick, they don't shrink, and they're a little bit longer than average. I'm long bodied, and when I bend over, yeah. So let's plunge right into it. Remove anything you have on the toilet, then take your all-purpose spray. One of my cleaning goals is to have pretty spray bottles. This is very utilitarian looking. I've gotten to the point where I want it to look nice, so I'm gonna find one, but for now I just have this one, it works great. And I'm going to use Grove All-Purpose Cleaner. The reason I'm using this one, and I haven't mixed it yet, is because I'm really trying to reduce my plastic use. I thought this was plastic, but it's actually glass. This is by Grove Collective, and I'll put a link to it if you wanna join, or you can just get things sent to you on a subscription basis, or you can just buy things one at a time. They're also at Target. So that's where I picked this one up this time. It is called Citroen, but I'm going to try this because the scent. Okay. I'm like, oh, it smells good. It smells like flowers. So if you want a flowery smelling toilet, there you go. So you just empty this into your spray bottle. Then you're just gonna fill it up to the neck. So about right there with water and you're good to go. Just start at the top because gravity's pulling everything down and we're just gonna spray every single bit of the toilet with this cleaner. Make sure you get behind, make sure you have get this, make sure you get the handle. And then every single toilet is very different, but make sure that you get in every crack that you can find because that's where things like to hang out and be hard to get. So you've got all the layers, make sure you cover them all. This is another place where stuff gets, so make sure you get all that. And then this is crucial, right there. Some toilets you can remove some of these pieces and get in there. Even though this toilet's really clean, I can see that it needs right there. And of course this part gets really dirty, especially if you have little boys. And next we're gonna move on to the bottom. We're gonna get all the front and the sides, especially down here. There's all sorts of parts of the toilet and the underneath the bowl. I'm gonna make sure to get all of it. That place right there where that knob is, you can take that knob off. Stuff gets totally in there and so gross. And then you wanna get the floor too, right around because stuff hangs out in the cracks. Make sure to spray everything down from top to bottom. You don't need to spray inside the bowl at all. We're gonna get to that in a minute. And then I have my microfiber cloth. I like to use paper towels or really yucky stuff. My toilet's pretty clean. I'm demonstrating this on a really clean toilet already, but if yours is gross, you may not wanna make your microfiber cloths gross too. And so you can use paper towels, but I have my handy favorite Mr. Sega microfiber cloths that are soft, wash up great, and I've been using these for a long time and they're pretty inexpensive. Start at the top again and wipe everything down. And I just want to point out that this is a soft closed lid. It's life changing. I know it sounds dumb, but I really love that you can just slam it as hard as you can and it just softly closes. It doesn't make any noise. So if you get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, you're not going to wake up your spouse or anyone else in the house. Okay, so then we're going to do the sides. This is one of the areas that people don't usually get very well. So take your time and get every single bit. It's gonna be like you're hugging the toilet. That part I don't love, but get everything that you can, including behind and all those different places. So you can pop this off and then get in there. If that's dirty, this one's not dirty. Next I have my toothbrush. You can tell it's been cleaning a lot of things. You can use one designated for the toilet if you're a total germaphobe, but I get these from the dentist usually or when my toothbrush is wearing out, I just put it in the cleaning bin. Make sure you get your toothbrush wet and get in all these places. Cause that's where the worst stuff hides. And like if you need it, then you're gonna do it on these places too, any places where you see grime or...
Okay, we've done the whole exterior, now we're gonna do the interior, and this is where you're gonna need a toilet brush and or a plunger. I hate these things, they're so unsanitary, but they work really well if your toilet's overflowing, and it's a good way to get the water out so you can expose the whole bowl and clean it all. Now, this one needs to be put in the dishwasher. You ever think that you could put these in the dishwasher? I wouldn't put it with other dishes, but I'm gonna do that because it needs a clean. So basically, the first step is to remove water. Okay, you're gonna plunge until the water is gone. And I'm just gonna demonstrate that if you do not have a plunger, you can use this kind of toilet bowl cleaner or toilet brush. This is actually called a toilet mop. This one is kind of like having a bad hair day brush, but I really like it because it has this feature where you can wring it out without touching it. It just like wrings the water out. Plus it can use bees kind of as a backup plunger. And then it has this case, which isn't very cute, but it's compact and it fits under the sink really well. And that's how you store it. I have a whole video where I cleaned a yucky toilet with that toilet bowl set and it has cleaner with it. It worked really well. So I'll put a link to that down below and also up above. One advantage is you can use it to get the water out. Basically, you just want to expose as much of the toilet bowl as you can so we can put cleaner on it. Otherwise, it's way diluted and it won't be as effective. Now, some of you are going to have some issues like with rust or different stains right around where the water comes out. And so this will help you get product on those places too. And look at that. It just rings right out. I don't have drips. That's why I like this toilet mop, even though I think it's kind of weird looking. I don't need these for this toilet, but if you have rings around your toilet or where the water comes out has these stains, or if there's stains where the water comes out, then you want to use a pumice stone. This one is called a chisel pumice stone. I'll put a link to it. I've never seen them until recently. They sent me this to try out and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Get right under the rim and it works so well. And then I'm just going to show you. So this one is a regular pumice stone. I've used it a lot. It sticks to cloths. I usually put it in a cup the plastic cup. It's really, I don't like the feel of it on my hands, but usually I have gloves on. It's only like two bucks, so you can't complain. Now, if you want like the Mercedes version of pumice stone, then we have this one. I'll put a link to this, but it's, it's white. In fact, I haven't even used this one. And it has some directions, but it has a handle. And that way you don't have to put your hands really close. And this one is a little bit more dense. So it doesn't like get so much of that yucky, the grit stuff. And it lasts a lot longer. So this one's a lot more. It's like $9, I think, but I love it. And you're going to ask me, don't pumice stone scratch your toilet. No, they have like finely ground glass in them. That's how they're abrasive. So yes, they will scratch your toilet a little bit. But if you already have those marks on your toilet, like the ring, it's already, I hate to tell you, it's already etched in. Like it's just because of the hard water and different things it actually eats away at the surface so you always want to use these wet never dry because that will scratch it and you want to use a light hand so don't go really hard and you should be fine the scratching is so micro that it's not gonna hurt your toilet if you follow those directions that's why you want to keep up on your toilet cleaning because if you don't get that stuff off it etches in more and also just sometimes your water is going to have that problem in here there's not a lot you can do about that make sure to get it wet first it shouldn't be used dry and then you can go underneath and get out those stains. But I wanna tell you that some stains are just going to not come out with anything, like nothing. Some of them are so old and etched in. Like if you inherited a home from your grandparents and they've had that water stain forever or those stains, sometimes they just won't come out. And I believe me, I've tried everything I can but pumice stone is your best bet and i love this chisel one for that reason we can just get right under there here's the other one again you're going to wet it this is for the bowl so you would just clean that stain with this one again i like the handle but you can use this kind too toilet bowl cleaner and i have this clorox with bleach it is disinfecting and it's for inside the toilet and i like this one because it's not like heavy duty on the dye and it's a gel because sometimes the heavy blue dye actually like stains the toilet a little bit or it's harder to get off so it doesn't matter which one you use but this is what i'm going to use all right next you're going to open this up huh. i think these are a little hard to open but that's good because i don't want it spilling i've had this stuff spill and i hate that so i like this one that hasn't spilled on me yet and then you're just gonna apply the cleaner around the rim, making sure to get everywhere, and let it sit for at least 10 minutes. Why? Because that's where the action happens. It's going to need some time to dwell, to sit there, to disinfect, and to lift stains. And if you have a problem with that area down there, you wanna get more water out so you expose 
any issues there and put this cleaner directly on those stains there. Okay, now you're gonna use your toilet brush. I have a video about silicone brushes versus bristle brushes, and then I have this mop. And I'll put a link to that video if you wanna check that out. I love how sanitary silicone is, but you'll just have to watch the video <laughs> if you care. But whatever one you have is great. And then you're just gonna start at the rim, just like we always said, top to bottom. Oh, you can just leave it like this. Some people want to flush the toilet, but if you have a brush that drips, put this lid down and this just captures it and holds it and lets it drip and you can come back later and get that. While that is sitting, I'm actually gonna close this. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the steam cleaner. This is totally optional, but if you have a smelly toilet, like around the rim at the bottom, it smells no matter what you do, and you've tried everything you can to get that smell out, or even the dried on stuff that's really gross, or it's really hard to get in some of those places underneath, and you can see that it's yellow, <laughs> it has pee. This handheld steam cleaner is about $40. It's amazing. It will get up stuff that you didn't know was there. I like to use this attachment. It comes with a bonnet but the bonnet was such a cheap one that I just safety pinned a cloth right over it. The reason why I like this though is because I don't really wanna wipe up the bottom. And so with a steam cleaner, it loosens everything up and then you need to wipe it off. It doesn't have a suction like a carpet cleaner does. And so if you have a cloth, that helps get some of the stuff up as you're steaming. So this is a great attachment that I like to use on the base of the toilet. Here's the attachment with this on it. And this is again, I don't need it, but I'm just demonstrating it. What you do, you have to make sure it's unlocked it's got to be open and then you have to push this little button to hold it down okay then we're gonna start it okay and then you just go down here the only thing I don't like about handheld steam cleaners is you've got to hold down the hold it down while you're using it but basically it's gonna go around this area and make sure you just steam off anything that you have on there and then you're just gonna capture all the dirt and stuff right there. You also might need to wipe it with a cloth, but in that case, I would use a paper towel. On this area, I like to use a paper towel. You can just make it doubled up like this and then dry the area. Next, I have a disinfectant. I don't disinfect my toilet every time, but if it's really bad and gross, you might want to do that. This is force of nature. We have a whole video about this. It is non-toxic. It's like bleach and it's a lot better for the environment too. So anyway, you make your own mix and it's good for two weeks. It's a little bit different, but I love this stuff. It smells like chlorine, very light chlorine, but it looks like it's just water. That is my only complaint is it's hard to keep my <laughs> cleaning supplies straight when they all look so clear like water. I like it because it seems pure, but this one's labeled force of nature, but that's the only thing I don't like about clear. I'm not gonna demonstrate this, but if you wanna disinfect my toilets, it's really clean now. In fact, you guys, I have to say, I really am impressed with the Grove all-purpose cleaner. I mean, this was already pretty clean, but I don't know if you can see it, but it is shiny. And plus, I know a lot of you think that you have to have that chemically smell or it's not clean, but I'm gonna tell you that this smells amazing. Like people will walk in and be like, what air freshener do you have? That's how good it smells. And I don't really, I'm not a rose person. It doesn't smell like your grandma's rose scent. It smells so good. Anyway, you can come in with this force of nature. Like I said, just do the same thing. Start from the top, work your way down. Now that it's clean, you're just disinfecting. So you've already removed anything that you need to because this step is just to get germs and viruses and things like that out. So spray the entire thing. And here's the trick. You need to know this. Let it sit for 10 minutes. With its force of nature, it's 10 minutes. If you don't know what your disinfecting cleaner needs, make sure to Google it. Even bleach needs time to sit to make sure it's completely disinfected. So let it sit on there and follow the directions but usually you just go in with your paper towel at this point and just wipe it all up. And sometimes you might need to rinse. So just make sure to follow the directions and that works. Now, I talked about this in the beginning, but I wanna tell you the thing that most people miss that I haven't even covered in this video and I don't even see people talking about on YouTube at all. I know this from personal experience. The thing that people miss when cleaning the toilet is this, the wall behind the toilet. I have taken a black light at many hotels and you know at a hotel, they usually clean every single day, but at home and at hotels, they miss the wall. And if you came in here with a black light, I'll show you. <laughs> There's splatters everywhere. Even on my walls, I, I actually thought, 
because I'm a clean freak. I might somehow be above that, but it's not true. I had it too. So you want to make sure to spray your all purpose cleaner or your disinfectant on your wall. Make sure to, you know, like there's different surfaces on walls, different paints. So make sure it's good for your paint. You might want to put it on the rag first and then wipe it down. But I highly recommend that you do this whole area and this wall where the toilet paper holder is, that gets splattered too. So my son, when he was younger, that was the worst place. There was splatters everywhere. So make sure to wipe down that area also. Another pro tip to keep the splatters down, and if you can train people to do this in your household, it will make it a lot cleaner. Before you flush, shut the lid. Do your business, shut the lid, and then flush and then it'll contain all that spray. Do you do that at your house? I wanna know, let me know in the comments. I didn't before I got married to my husband, but he insists on it. He actually cannot handle it. And he also keeps the lid down when the toilet's not in use. At our house, we're toilet lid closers. So even when we're not using the toilet, it's always got the lid closed and before we flush. I wanna know how it goes at your house. I know we're all different. There's no judgment here. I think we're all at different spots on our cleaning journeys, but thanks so much for being here. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments and share this video with anyone you think may need a little bit of pointers on how to clean a toilet.